What's up traders, Andrew O'Connell here with Pristine Capital. Welcome to your market recap video. It's July 14th of 2022. Let's dive into these box scores. We had the PPI report come out this morning and it came in hot just like the CPI report yesterday. Now, normally I would think the market should get blasted on that, right? But the S&P 500 only finished down 0.24%. Our NASDAQ QQQ actually finished out positive up 0.36%. Small caps were down about one percentage point. The dogs of the Dow were down 0.44%. And our ARK Innovation ETF was down a whopping 2.07%. Take a look, pretty much all of these indices closed towards the upper end of their day's range. Almost on the highs of the day, volatility contracted in all of these indices. And breath did finish out negative. We only had 28% advancers in these small caps and we only had 15.5% up volume. Now let's check out our Finviz heat map. What's interesting is that you might think if you look at this heat map, hey, how are we only down, what is this, 24 basis points on the S&P 500? The reason being is that Apple and Microsoft both finished the day in positive territory. These two big boys, they make up about 13% of the S&P 500 because it is a market cap weighted index so when those two names are advancing, it's actually very difficult to get a decline in the headline indices. We also saw there was some relative strength in the semiconductors. And always keep in mind, if you're a Pristine Capital member, every single evening we're posting our trend and dark index dashboards. Yesterday we noticed that there was a dark index percentile reading for NVIDIA, or not for NVIDIA specifically, for the semiconductors index, may as well be NVIDIA specifically, of 94.1%. So we saw, we had clear evidence that these dark pool buyers were really going for that group and it ended up being an outperforming group today. An underperforming group was energy. Look at these names, they were all down significantly. So normally you might think, you know, we got this hot inflation number, right? We should see all these inflation sensitive names like the you know, fertilizer stocks, energy stocks, those kinds of companies, those should be the ones that are rallying, right? But we actually had quite the opposite so some very interesting dynamics going on under the hood let's dive into these sectors best performers really are momentum leaders this this list is always ranked in terms of momentum arc genomics did pull back biotech did pull back and the arc innovation etf did pull back again the sock semiconductors etf was our top performer today other than msos cannabis and yolo cannabis there is some chatter about this cannabis safe banking act that could potentially be passed by the senate and that is coming up soon so i definitely want to do some more research on that a lot of those msos cannabis names they are so deeply undervalued i do a lot of fundamental work on those names there is one specifically that i really like and we shared the setup with pristine capital members so we're pretty much getting ready to potentially action on those names. But let's see what the river brings. Tonight, again, you know, when our dark index dashboard comes out, I do want to see what that number looks like for the MSOS Cannabis ETF. If you're interested in receiving that analysis in real time, feel free to go ahead to pristinecapital.net and get yourself signed up. All right, let's take a look here. Style factors. Boom, we had the Minval style factor down 0.26%. Growth. Isn't that odd? We just got a super hot inflation print. And why is growth leading us higher? Doesn't really make much sense, right? It's pretty odd. So yeah, very strange stuff. To me, it seems like the market is bottoming. What other explanation could there be when we just get such a hot inflation number and all the stocks that you would think should be declining, they're actually advancing. I think the market is pretty much telling us that we are seeing a peak in inflation. Let's take a look. Our S&P 500, boom, over here. Our trend model's at a negative one. And check this out. The S&P 500, we have a key level right above us at 3807.75. spot 75. Oh my gosh, and I almost forgot. Tomorrow is options expiration. So a lot of times we do get some wonky action for options expiration, especially when we are trading around key levels. There is a lot of options open interest around this 3800 level. But get this, so today... We slipped into the abyss. We undercut these lows, right? We had every reason to just keep going down to this 36, 36 spot, five monthly value where you're low, but we did not. Those buyers stepped in and auctioned us higher. 
Now, if we clear this 3807 spot 75 monthly point of control, suddenly, before you know it, we're going to clear the 20-day simple moving average. And then above that, I do think we can get our retest of the 50-day simple moving average. So I think we could be in a scenario here pretty quickly where the tables get turned and suddenly as everyone has been getting bearish over these past couple days buying put options, thinking it's the end of the world, I think we could start moving up to that 50 and I think that would take a lot of people by surprise. Now look at this. There are stocks that are moving to the upside. They're showing relative strength. PRVA is one of our names that we are long. Take a look at this. This stock, now it's up even more. Earlier in the day, I posted a tweet. This stock is up 87% from its mid-May lows. It's super important to internalize this. A lot of the best stocks in the marketplace bottomed out in mid-May. So as you're looking at charts, if you're just looking at the headline indices, you're really missing out. Our goal is to really monitor these relative strength names. And speaking of relative strength, another relative strength name that we do have on the books is DQ. It's a fantastic Chinese stock. This one, let's take a look at the weekly chart. You'll see what I mean. Some elegance, some decadence right here. Check this out. So we're trading right up to that yearly points of control. We've had a fantastic move off the lows. Again, this stock since mid-May, it was trading at a low of 36 bucks and now we're trading at $70. So some of these stocks have already doubled off the lows. And of course, when a stock doubles off the lows, there are those, those uh, prudent players, those A players that bought these things. You know, maybe they bought it at 35 bucks. Maybe they bought it at 41 bucks. Maybe they bought it at 47 bucks. Do you blame them for taking some profits up here over the past couple weeks for lightening up on their exposure? They did just double their money in a few weeks. So that's why it's super important. Even if a name like this, if it consolidates for a couple weeks, super important. Don't take it off your radar. That's probably just a lot of back and filling, new players stepping in, some of those early movers stepping out, that sort of thing. Another name that comes to mind within this group of stocks is Lee Auto. Lee Auto, you can argue, looks even better than DQ. It's above the early value area. And this is another stock. Pretty much, yeah, it doubled off the lows. Yep, it was at 1884. We hit a high just a couple of weeks ago, 41 bucks, 100% rip. And what's happened over the past three weeks? Nothing really. There's no real significant selling pressure in this stock. It's just a sideways consolidation. So yeah, if you're following the financial media, if you're following you know, the sentiment on Twitter, it really looks like it's doom and gloom out there because that's looking at the headline indices. But there are these gems that are under the hood, where in these names, it's you know a brand new bull market that's going on. Another one that I'm watching for tomorrow's session is MGPI. Take a look at this, another name that just looks fantastic. And we've been consolidating for about two weeks now. And this 20 day simple moving average is catching up to price. Now remember, when everyone was super concerned about hyperinflation, that sort of thing, names like CF were just ripping. Remember the run that this stock had Oh my lord, this stock went from 45 bucks all the way up to 110 bucks and change, 113.49. Now, over the last two months, as these growth stocks and more high risk names have begun to rally, we're seeing institutions that are moving out of these names like CF. And they're moving out of these names like uh, MOS, Mosaic. Remember, everyone was in this name? This one hit a high, oh my gosh, of. 79.28 in April and look at it now it's down at 43.67 so that theme of the hyperinflation oh my gosh everyone get positioned for it it's already come and gone now check this out let's look at our Nasdaq real quick because that one is doing something a little bit different the only opening trade that I did do today was getting long of the Nasdaq because I started to see that relative strength and one of our members the infamous BDY actually brought up potentially trading the Nasdaq BDY is a, a super sharp guy. He's a former floor trader in the 10-year treasury pit. And he's just awesome. So I always, you know, when he says something, I try to look out and just see, like, what is he looking at? And so I took a trade in the NASDAQ today. Check this out. So these are my trades for today's session. Oh, I want to show you this before we go over that. This was at 1018. This could have been the pivot. Two new analyses from Fed staff 
have concluded that strains in the U.S. Treasury market could complicate the central bank's plans to reduce its balance sheet by amplifying the effects of those reductions on financial markets and raising interest rates more than anticipated. So this is the Fed blinking right here. At 1018, the market was very, very weak. And this little sound bite, this piece of media came out. So the Fed basically said, hey guys, we know that we said we were gonna reduce the balance sheet at XYZ pace. Because the treasury market is all effed up, we can no longer do that. Could the market have keyed in on this as the Fed making a dovish pivot? Could that be the reason why the market lifted a bit? Absolutely. These kinds of messages from the Federal Reserve are very, very important. Now that brings me to my trades for today. Let's check these out. So what did I do today? I did want to get longer of the NASDAQ, and so I had to make room in my portfolio. So I closed out the second half of my digital ocean trade. And let's go ahead and swap these. I closed the remaining half of digital ocean for $35.55. I had paid $41.92 for this name. Do I think this name is going to head higher? Absolutely. But I wanted to make sure that I closed out, rather than like closing out one of my big winning trades, let me close out the stock that's showing the least amount of relative strength. This name will likely have its day, but I want to move this capital where I think I can get better bang for my buck. And so I moved it into NASDAQ call. So I did increase my leverage in my portfolio. I got the August 19th, 282 calls for 1163. I wrote here, we're seeing a deflationary wave before our very eyes. NASDAQ will likely benefit once these players stop puking. See, I bought that at 947. Where were we? Check this out. At 947, we were not exactly on the lows, but yeah, take a look here. This is our hourly chart. Let's go to the five minute. See how we were. 940 somewhere around here on the Nasdaq and then we had a nice advance throughout the session so really no complaints here I mean to be honest I thought acceleration was gonna I thought inflation was going to decelerate on these inflation reports it did not I could certainly have just gotten whacked by the market the market's being accommodative so I'm gonna take it as long as it continues to be strong Heading into tomorrow, definitely going to do my evening work and my morning work as well. But I just want to make sure we have a nice group of relative strength stocks to choose from for tomorrow's session, just in case anyone wants to add some exposure to the market. With that said, that about does it for this market recap video. Hope you all have an awesome rest of your evening. And as always, I will see you all tomorrow.